Hey, what's up, you guys? Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I understand that you're having a busy schedule, so we're gonna get right into it, okay? You know, most webinars, the instructors, they like to tell their life stories and they waste time, you know, they reveal some things, they don't really reveal everything, they leave you pumped up, and you know, that's pretty much it. Today, we're gonna get right into it, guys, okay? I am gonna tell you a little bit about myself, um, just so you can know who you're learning from, but after that little intro, we're going right into it, guys. So my name is Eric Richardson. I'm a licensed financial advisor. I do run many businesses, but my favorite business is the asset recovery business. And I assist people in filing claims for money that they didn't even know about, okay? So when I graduated college, I went on to play basketball overseas in Europe. When I was there, it was just basketball. We had practice, we had games, and I had a lot of free time on my hand. And I was always interested in becoming a real estate investor, but I don't come from a family with wealth. I don't have any parent that can just give me money for a down payment on a home and start an investment property immediately. You know, so I was constantly looking up ways to get started in real estate, you know, low startup costs. So, you know, I, I stumbled across wholesaling. I did that for a little bit, but then I found out about these unclaimed funds and tax overages. So once I realized that, you know, there's money out there that people don't even know about and you can help them file a claim and you get paid for it and you don't have to be an attorney, you don't have to have any license. I was like, this is for me. So, you know, in my free time after practices, I was doing research, I was making calls and I was getting a few deals and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't take it serious. You know, I, I was just out there having fun, playing basketball, also doing this. But then COVID happened. When COVID happened, I came back and I just took it full time. <clears throat> I took it full time. I took it serious. And I always tell people, you only need about two to three hours per day working on this. Monday through Friday. Of course, if you want to work harder, you can do more hours. But if you work smarter, you can fully automate this business. And I'll go over that as well. But let's go ahead and um, jump straight into it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna go over this business, okay? We're gonna reveal everything today. You guys are gonna see the industry <coughs> that they've been trying to keep secret for years, guys. This has been going on for years. So let's go ahead and start off with tax overages. Tax, tax overages are also known as surplus funds or tax overbids. They are the remaining funds that are payable to the previous owner when a tax foreclosure auction occurs. Okay, so when somebody doesn't pay their taxes, guys, right here, when someone does not pay their local or state taxes on a property for a lengthy period of time, the county will foreclose the property and have an auction. So you didn't pay your taxes for a long amount of time. The county is going to send you notices. They're going to send you letters. You know, look, you need to pay your taxes. It hasn't happened. After that happens, they're going to foreclose it. After your property is foreclosed, the county technically can only get the taxes that were owed. So they're going to host an auction, okay? So the county only wanted their old taxes. So if the property sells for a greater amount than the amount due, the remaining proceeds are payable to the previous owner. So the county is going to start the auction with the taxes that were owed. So if you own a $150,000 home, you didn't pay $5,000 in taxes, the county is going to hold an auction where the starting bid will be $5,000 because that's your taxes owed. Now, most of these properties at these tax deed and tax lien foreclosures sell from anywhere from 40% to upwards of 120% of the property's assessed value. So that $150,000 home might sell for $100,000. And if you only owed $5,000 in taxes, that's a $95,000 surplus. Now, this is referred to as tax deed overage, tax deed overbid, excess proceeds, excess funds, excess surplus funds. <coughs> These are all different um, terms used to identify the same thing, a remaining profit, okay? So many people don't even know about these funds. The foreclosure happens and a lot of people just think it's over. The county is not obligated to inform you and if they do reach out, it's in a manner that will no longer get your attention to open the letter. They will make a minimal effort to notify the property owner by sending a first-class letter to the address. 
However, the original property owner no longer lives or occupies at that property. So they're sending out mail to these addresses where the previous owner no longer lives, okay? So in most states, there's a time frame when you can actually claim these excess proceeds. And when that time expires, they're S cheated, which just means they're turned over to the state. So they get reported to the state treasury's department once nobody claims them. In the state of Florida alone, there's an average of $4 million per year in unclaimed funds. You know, we're here to help people get their money and you can charge a finder's fee. So these properties, I mean, you can, I'm going to go over some examples, but a lot of these properties are selling for an amount way higher than the taxes owed. So the surplus amount is really large. And these auctions occur daily. These auctions occur Monday through Friday and you're able to see live you know, what's occurring by utilizing the auction calendars, by identifying how your state, how your county um, reports the actual results from these auctions. So a question that you guys might have is why don't people just get the funds themselves? You know, how can we step into a system? You know, can't they just backtrack us? Won't they just do this themselves? The truth is people can't file this on their own. They can file the tax surplus on their own. But it is a lengthy process that requires going through the proper channels in court and the majority of the time requiring an attorney to file a paperwork. So I mentioned that you don't have to be an attorney, but in some states you will need an attorney to file the claim. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do it at all. It just means you get the process together and you hire an attorney. And I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. So any type of um, asset recovery firm, if you're dealing with an um, attorney, they're typically going to charge you one third, that 33% if successful. You can negotiate this amount with the claimant, but it's customary to charge anywhere from 15 to 30%. Okay, so that's the standard in this business. Some people, you know, they may not be comfortable with 30, but you have to explain to them this is money that you had no idea about and you operate on a contingency. Okay. So when you operate on contingency, that is contingent based upon you having a successful claim. They don't, you don't get paid unless they get paid. So think about it. Um, most of these funds are available. And to be honest, you can even charge more than 30 if you want to. Some states, they don't have a jurisdiction over the percentage that you can charge. But this definitely can be something challenging for the average person. They don't know about it. They don't know what paperwork to use. <clears throat> and then also, if they did receive a letter, they would probably think it's fake anyway. So that's one thing that you have to get over in this business is people thinking that it's fake and people thinking that it's a scam. Um, but I teach you ways you can avoid that, okay? Um, so like I said, we're here to help. By recovering these surplus funds, you will help people in a time of need. If someone can't pay their taxes, they definitely can use some extra cash most of the time, people have lost everything, and this would be some good news. You know, they can start over. They lost their property. I helped this one lady. She was actually staying in a um, a mobile, it was like a trailer, a, a mobile trailer on the property. So the home got foreclosed. They still had the land, and she was just staying there. She didn't have nowhere to go, and she had over a $90,000 surplus that she was able to use on a down payment on home and start her life over. So, you know, this is the easiest business to become successful because you're helping people. And when you can actually help people, you take pride in your business. And like I said, we're based on contingency. So everything um, is something that you have to get people to trust you with. You know, like I, like I mentioned before, people can't think it, this is a scam, okay? So right now, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an example of um, I'll give you guys an example of how the county will reach out and and nobody will get it. So this right here, this is from Miami. As you can see, they sent certified mail. They sent that to the um, previous homeowner's address. Here we have this is directly from the county, guys. This is not a private business. This is not a secret business. This is not an illegal business. This is directly from the county. Notice of surplus funds from tax deed sale. They give you all the information and it says here from the state statutes, that means this is state law that this money is due. It says that you know the property was sold 
and there's a surplus of $157,770.48. Subject to change because you know there's probably going to be some fees associated with the county. But it's going to be held for 120 days. So most states have a 120 day period where you can actually get that claim in. So any previous owners, lien holders, mortgagers, they have an opportunity to file a claim. Now, it's not just property owners who can um, file this claim. If they're deceased, you can assist the heirs. And this is why this business is good because a lot of people pass away and that's how the property taxes don't get paid. And the heirs, the kids, you know, you can help them out. This is money that I never even thought about. Oh, wow, my grandfather died, my mother died, my father died, and there's money left over. We had no idea about this. So here, the, you know, they pretty much give you instructions. They'll tell you everything, and they even provide the claim form. So this right here provides the claim form. You know, you fill it out. Are you a lien holder? Are you a title holder? You know, you fill out all your information there. You provide your proof, the deed. And in my course, guys, I'll show you exactly how to fill this out. <laughs> what you need, how you can perform your, perform your due diligence on the property so you can see all this information. And everything does have to be notarized, guys. These are legal claims. Everything is done through the county and the state. So, you know, you have to come official. Things do have to be notarized. So here they have another address. And this right here is 45 pages, guys. So, you know, they sent to a lot of addresses and they were unsuccessful. But that's, why, that's how you step in. So you step in as an asset recovery agent and you're doing your research, guys. So in this business, you have to identify, you know, where these leads are coming from. So that's the first step in this business. You want to identify. And to identify, there's certain keywords that you can search. Um, I'll go over a few examples. So right here, this is surplus funds from tax deed sale. I performed that on a simple Google search and this is the website that popped up. This is Sarasota County in Florida. So here, they're telling you exactly what surplus funds are. When a property is sold at a tax deed sale, the proceeds first pay for the delinquent taxes and the cost to bring the property to auction. Any surplus over the open and bid amount is deposited with the clerk and comptroller and subject to a registry fee. So <coughs> they're saying here that, you know, the surplus funds are going to be held at the clerk. Okay, the clerk of courts. They give you instructions on how to claim and they tell you exactly how to you know view what's going on. So when you click right here to view funds from the tax deed sale, it's gonna bring you to this. So when you get here, there's a list, guys. You know, it's telling you the surplus balance right there. And you know, there's pages and pages and pages of this. So these funds, um, you know, there's small funds, there's large funds, there's big cases, there's small cases. I typically like to go over um, 10,000 and above, but as you can see, certain counties have different amounts. We just looked at Miami, and Miami had a 157,000, and now you see in Sarasota, they're small ones. But don't be afraid of the small ones. You can even charge 50% if you want to help somebody. So, you know, they have some big ones, they have some small ones, and this isn't just Florida, guys. You can find this for this right here is Baltimore. So, Baltimore right here, <coughs> Maryland. Um, lets you know about these surplus funds. So you have to know the difference between tax D and tax lien. So some states are tax lien and they will host these auctions for people who don't pay their taxes. <coughs> and someone can actually purchase that property and they'll have interest in it until the redemption period is up. So right here, as you can see in Baltimore, there's some huge surplus funds right here. There's some big ones, but all of this is public records, guys. This is all online for you to see. They give you the information. You know, they give you the parcel information, the owner's name. So you're able to do your due diligence and figure out exactly who these people are, what the previous property address was, and confirm everything. And like I mentioned in my course, I'm going to show you step by step exactly what to do. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you how to find more leads because there's other ways you can find leads besides just Googling. Um, I'm gonna tell you how to find these people. So when you see the previous owner, you now have to identify what's their phone number. Um, you know, what's a good email. You have to be able to get in contact with them so that you can pitch to them 
<coughs> and explain to them that you can assist them on filing this claim. Now, the beauty about this business is you don't charge any upfront fees at all. So you're doing all the research, you're doing all the paperwork, and in my course, I do provide all the paperwork. So I'll go ahead and go over the documents that you need. You're gonna have the agreement form. In this agreement form, you are going to state all the duties and responsibilities of your company to assist them on filing this claim. And you're also going to mention the percentage that you're gonna charge. So if you're charging 30%, you're gonna put it on there 30%. Once successful, that's the fee you charge. <coughs> that's the agreement form. Then you're gonna have the county's claim form. So each county is gonna have their own individual claim form. So here, as you can see, um, boom, they got the claim form. You click there and we already looked at Miami. Miami had their claim form. Sarasota has their claim form. Every county has their own claim form. So you're gonna need that filled out you will need limited power of attorney on um, this is so that you can specifically go after these funds on their behalf and also so that you can get the check written out to your company so when the county issues checks they're going to issue the check out in two ways they can either <coughs> mention it, um write it fully in your business name or it's going to be to the previous owner in care of so if it's in care of your business name that allows you the cash checks so you will need a business bank account but we're gonna go over the expenses in a little bit let's keep um, going over this right now so when it comes to the asset recovery industry we realize that we have to identify leads and we have to figure out their phone numbers to get in contact with them now when you're talking to them you're explaining them you know what it is what your company does your company <coughs> what we do is we perform an audit on the county perform an audit and we identify surplus funds that are available to previous owners and we reach out to them and see if we can assist them. You know, we don't charge any upfront fees at all. We'd love to help you out. We have all the documents needed and we can pretty much expedite this service. Now, these documents will need to be notarized, like I said, so you can set that up with them. They can either meet at their home, they can go to a post office, <coughs> or they can meet at a Starbucks or a McDonald's. So, you know, wherever they're comfortable, get these documents notarized. You'll be able to get everything. After that, you want to um, reach out to the county. So in my course, I um, teach you guys how you can reach out to the county. This is nothing you should be afraid of. You can call them. You can send a, um, a formal request via email as well. And the county will let you know. I have a great relationship with all the clerks, especially in Florida. I reach out to them, I talk to them, you know, you see what is required to file a claim. Most of the time they're gonna tell you on the website, but sometimes you might have a claim where you're helping an heir and it might be something you have a question with. <clears throat> you can reach out to them and ask them and they'll actually inform you. So let's just go over it one more time. Identify leads, figure out their phone number, reach out to them, you get them to agree. Now you have to get them to sign the documents, you get everything notarized, you figure out what the county requires. So the county might require an attorney. So I did mention that you don't have to be an attorney, but in some states they require an attorney. So you get all the paperwork together, you reach out to an attorney that's typically in real estate <coughs> or in finances, and they'll be able to assist you. And in my course, I teach you how you can find these real estate um, lawyers and what to say to them. And you don't have to pay them a large amount. I personally pay my attorney $500 per claim. An attorney is not even required in Florida and it's not required in many states. Um, some of them actually do. So you just have to be aware of that, like Georgia and um, Texas. But there's some loopholes that you can do to actually get the claims filed without an attorney. And I teach that in my course as well. So after you do that, the county is gonna issue out a check. Like I mentioned, it's either gonna be in your company's name or in their name and care of your company. <clears throat> and you'll cash it. So like I said, guys, you know, I wanted to get straight to it. Um, in this business, the people who succeed are the experts. So this is a simple business, but it's not an easy business. You're going to be spending time doing research. You're going to be spending time on the phone and you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be able to thoroughly explain to people how they're owed money you have to have a calm voice. You can't be too uppity. You have to be professional. So if you're professional, 
<clears throat> you're very organized and you have two to three hours per day, then you'll do great in this industry. You'll do great. You know, as you can see, the surpluses, there's large amounts of money. And these claims, although they can take a few months to get paid out, you can build your pipeline because these auctions are constantly occurring. And as you guys know, with COVID, a lot of people are losing their homes due to foreclosure. So that's even more surplus funds that are available. <clears throat> you guys can utilize this Robinhood method. You're basically turning into Robinhood. You're, you're bringing money back to people. You're reuniting them with money that they never knew they, that existed. So let's go ahead and go over the expenses <coughs> associated with this business. Sorry, guys, for the coughing. I haven't been feeling so good. But <coughs> the businesses associated with this business are very low. So for starters, you're going to need an LLC. I get this question a lot. You know, do you absolutely need an LLC? Technically, no, but you just want to get it just to protect yourself and to go ahead and be professional. Get your LLC. Get your EIN, open up your business bank account, and now you're official. Now you can actually cash checks that the county writes because <clears throat> nobody is just going to let the average Joe Schmo um, help them file a claim. You know, they're going to want to work with a company, so you need to actually have a company. So after you get your LLC, your EIN, your business bank account, go ahead and get a website set up. You get a website set up. This is going to be typically around $18 per month. Or if you have a buddy that can make a website for you, they can do that. You get your website. You want to explain what you do. You want to provide some testimonials. And you want to be as transparent as possible. You want to have pictures. <clears throat> a lot of people can think that this is a scam. So I always send over my website so they can tie a face to the voice and have full transparency on who I am. And what I always mention to people, you know, if I was trying to scam you, I'd be asking for money up front. I'm not asking for any money at all. I'm just trying to assist you in filing this claim. And I could actually send you over what I'm looking at right now so we can have full transparency and I can help you out and you're comfortable. And that's typically how you get deals done. So we have the LLC. We have our business bank account. We have our website. You're going to have to pay for some mailers. Sometimes you will have to overnight documents. You know, this can be fairly cheap. $10, it depends who, what service you use. A notary, that's typically gonna be around $30 to $50. And then if you need an attorney, like I mentioned, it could be $500 per claim, sometimes more, or you can operate on a contingency basis with them as well, where they get 10% of the proceeds that you recover as well. So the startup cost in this business is very low. The leads are free online on the county's website and <clears throat> there's also paid services. So there's a few websites that you can use, 150 a month, 300 a month. Um, but all in all, you can get started in this business for less than $100. So if you guys are interested in learning more about this business, go ahead and use um, promo code Take Action for $100 off. So with Take Action, you'll get $100 off the course. When you check out, it's going to be a section that says coupon code. Type that in. You'll receive that off. I do want to let you guys know the course does come with my mentorship. <clears throat> so with my mentorship, we can do Zoom calls. We can go over your script. We can go over anything that you might be struggling in, and we can get right. Now, a, a bonus is this course does teach unclaimed state funds as well. So in unclaimed state funds... These are funds that are reported to the state treasuries that people don't know about. So this can be unclaimed um, insurance claims. This can be stocks, bonds, treasuries. This can be unclaimed bank accounts from your grandma that you didn't even know about, that she didn't know that she left over, your mom didn't know. And like I always say, you can help out the heirs, the beneficiaries. So <coughs> make sure you guys check it out. Do your due diligence. You can go on Google, YouTube, look up other people teaching this industry. I teach this for the lowest cost, guys. <clears throat> $349, you use the code, take action, get $100 off, $249. There's people that are charging anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 to teach this business. I personally do not think that it's, it should take that much um, to learn this business because it is so simple, but I can see why they charge. I have students that get deals for $10,000, $15,000, $3,000, and they only paid, you know, 
$300 for the course, opposed to these other people that are charging $1,500 for the course, but their students are still making ten, tens of thousands of dollars. So it does make sense. But I was in that situation before where I couldn't afford that course and I just wanted to make something real affordable. So if you guys are interested, like I said, please take advantage of that. If you have any questions, um, reach out, book a call, send me an email. Um, I'm looking forward to getting deals with you guys. We also, I wanna let you know, I do have a partnership program. So when you get started in overages, <coughs> you might be a little nervous. You may not know how to do something. We can partner on a deal and do a 60-40 split and I'll help you close everything. So take advantage guys. Thank you so much for watching.